This session constitutes a portion of the workshop presented at the 6th World Congress of Regional Anesthesia held in September 2023. The erector spinae muscle is a group of muscles located in the back and plays a significant role in maintaining upright posture, controlling movement of the spine, and providing stability to the vertebral column. It is situated on either side of the vertebral column and spans the length of the lower back to the upper back. The erector spinae muscle group is actually made up of three distinct muscles, iliocostalis. This muscle is the lateral outermost component of the erector spinae. It runs from the pelvis to the upper thoracic vertebrae and is responsible for extending and laterally flexing the spine. Longissimus. Positioned in the middle of the erector spinae group, the longissimus muscle runs from the sacrum to the upper thoracic vertebrae. It assists in extending the spine and also contributes to lateral flexion and rotation. Spinalis, the spinalis muscle is the medial, closest to the spine, component of the erector spinae. It runs from the sacrum to the upper thoracic vertebrae and is primarily responsible for spine extension. In an adult patient, placing our transducer on the costal plane, we will observe consecutive rounded images with posterior acoustic shadowing and a sliding hyperechoic line that will correspond to the pleura. As we move medially, the rounded images will transform into irregular images shaped like camel humps. These will correspond to the costa transverse joints. Our target is found in the current sequence, rectangular images with posterior acoustic shadowing, where the pleura hides in deeper planes. The distinct sawtooth or tile-like image will make us consider that we are over the lamina. There are a series of considerations that we must take into account when we perform ESP blocks in pediatrics. Physiological spine curves in children refer to the natural curves that should be present in a healthy spine. The spine has three primary curves, cervical lordosis, thoracic kyphosis, and lumbar lordosis. These curves develop as the child grows and becomes able to support their head and sit upright. Children are born with a C-shaped curve in their spines, known as a primary curves. This curvature presented by the newborn should be taken into account when conducting examinations of the child's spine. As they grow and begin to sit, crawl and stand, secondary curves develop, particularly in the cervical and lumbar regions. These curves help to balance the weight of the head and trunk, allowing for efficient movement and posture. Physiological curvature is crucial for maintaining a stable and balanced spine. It helps distribute mechanical forces and reduce stress on the spinal structures. At birth, the child's spine presents incomplete ossification. Ossification is completed around the age of 16. There are three centers of ossification, which evolve differently until full maturity. Unlike the adult, this incomplete ossification is what allows optimal ultrasound images in the child's spine. The centers of secondary ossification can remain cartilaginous until the age of 16. The centers of secondary ossification are located at the distal ends of the spinous process and the two transverse processes. This factor can influence the ultrasound image obtained, distinguishing it from adults. In a child, a cartilaginous focus can be identified at the tip of the transverse process. In this video, you can observe the scanning from the lamina, passing through the transverse process, where ossification centers are identified, and reaching the rib and back to transverse processes. Furthermore, the difference in size between the child's vertebral spine and that of the adult makes the transducer used, as well as its footprint, of vital importance. The use of transducers with overly wide footprints can provide overlapped images of multiple vertebral structures, making it difficult to identify the optimal point for approach. The size also influences the thickness of the back muscles. The use of large gauge needles could hinder the deposition and spread of the anesthetic below the erector muscle and above the transverse process, resulting in a multifascial spread that could affect the effectiveness of the block. It is advisable to use smaller and beveled needles, not toe tip, to ensure proper diffusion of the injected solution. The volume injected also depends on the size of the child and it is advisable to use no more than 0.4 milliliters per kilogram of weight of 0.125% levobupivacaine or 0.2% ropivacaine.